In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fake portrait mode right inside of Adobe Photoshop. So let's get right into it. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rucker Films. And yes, in today's video, we're talking all about the fake portrait mode effect inside of Adobe Photoshop. So for those that don't know, portrait mode is that really awesome feature on most smartphones these days where the camera mimics the blurry background effects that you typically see from a DSLR with a low aperture. When you're taking a photo on a digital SLR camera, if you pull the aperture down to a number of around f1.8 or f2, then the background is going to be really blurry if you position a subject in the foreground. And basically portrait mode is recreating that look. Now I know phones like the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 10s Max has this feature, but if you don't have this phone and you don't have a digital SLR, but you still want to take really awesome portrait photos on your phone, then what can you do? Well, simply we just fake it inside of Adobe Photoshop. So once you're inside of Adobe Photoshop and you have a photo loaded up, we are ready to begin. And to begin with, we first want to start by just unpadlocking the background. So we'll select the padlock icon and we're just going to make a copy of this layer. So hold command C and command V. Now we'll turn layer zero off for now. We just don't want to affect that now. We'll go to layer one and we'll go up into the quick selection tool on the left side of Photoshop. Now we want to increase the brush size. So we're going to increase that by selecting this. Pull that up all the way up to around 130%. And now you just want to go ahead and you just want to draw within the subject. So as you can see, I'm in the foreground. I'm holding my camera. And I'm just going to draw a mask around myself. Now, don't worry too much if you go over the edges. We can go ahead and correct that in a short while. Just try and get all of the subject within that mask. Now, that looks really good. Although if I zoom in, you can see the mask is starting to bleed over onto this building. And we want to get rid of that. The same thing goes for down here. So I'm going to start by decreasing the size of the brush. So we'll decrease this down to around 40 pixels. And if I hold option on the keyboard at the same time as painting, then we can go ahead and we can remove that part of the mask from the photo. Of course, though, you can see I've just deselected one side of my face. So I want to go ahead and hold shift and draw back over myself. Now, this is a little bit difficult because my skin color is very similar to the color of the building in the background. So don't worry about getting it 100% perfect for now. As long as the person is within the mask, we can go ahead and we can correct this later on. So I'm just going to carry on. I'm just going to get rid of this part of the photo. Just going to zoom in, make sure everything is sitting within a mask. This shouldn't be there. So we're going to hold command and we're just going to get rid of this bit of the mask. And there we go. I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to go to the regular cursor and I'm going to hold command C and command V. And that should paste that person into their own layer. Now, if I zoom in, you can see exactly what I was talking about a minute ago. Because the building is a very similar color to the color of my skin, the computer had a very difficult time trying to figure out what was me and what was the building. So I'm just going to go up to the eraser tool. We'll decrease the size of this will increase the hardness and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to erase that part of the image. There we go. That's rough, but it kind of does the job. Now we want to go ahead and we want to do this for any other part of the image. So as you can see, the background is appearing through here. So I'm just going to delete this part of the background. And once you're happy with the look of that, you can go ahead and turn layer one back on. Now select layer one, we'll go up into filter, blur, and you can go ahead and select any one of these blurs. Now you can do blur, blur more, box blur, Gaussian blur, lens blur, motion blur, radial blur, shape blur, smart blur, or surface blur. For this, I'm gonna really try and recreate that classic bokeh look. So I'm gonna go ahead and select lens blur. Now Photoshop might take a minute to load up the lens blur option. This is quite strenuous on the computer, so it will take a little bit longer to load. But once it loads up, you can go ahead and you can see that we've got this blurred image. That looks really awesome. Now, if we pull the radius down, then we're going to decrease the amount of blur within the shots. So I'm going to set this to around 50% for now, 51 it's set to. And in shape, we can go ahead and we can change the shape of the background blur. 
So you can set this to triangle, you can set this to octagon, you can set this to anything in between. And this is basically going to recreate that classic bokeh in the background. So the wider you have your aperture, the more open the aperture is going to be and the closer to a circle it is going to be. So you want to select octagon if you want a really wide open background blur. But if you close down your aperture quite a little bit, then you can start to see the edges of the aperture starting to appear in the background. So if you wanted to recreate that, you can go ahead and select something like a hexagon or a pentagon. I'm going to select octagon for now though, so that's octagon 8. And I'm just going to increase the radius of the blur just a little bit more. So we'll go up to 60%. And then of course we've got all of these other settings. We've got blade curvature, rotation, brightness threshold. But I don't worry about all of those. I just adjust the shape and the radius. So once you're happy with the look of that, we'll press OK. And as you can see, we've recreated that really awesome classic background blur effect. However, if I zoom in just a little bit, so I zoom into one of these edges, you can see because we've got this layer on top of the blur, we've got this really weird outline around the subject that doesn't look too great. So in order to correct this, we just want to select layer two. We'll hold command and T to load transform. Hold shift on your keyboard. You really want to hold shift. Otherwise, it's going to just do all sorts of things like this. So you want to hold shift and we're just going to increase the scale just a little bit. We'll increase it both sides. And there you go. That looks really awesome. Of course, though, if that background blur is a little bit too intense, you can just go to layer one. You can pull the opacity down a little bit and you can turn on the original background layer, so layer zero. And as you can see, if we pull it all the way down to zero, we've got no blur. All the way up to 100, we've got the original blur. So feel free to select a number that works for you. And there you go. That is how you do the fake portrait mode effect right inside of Adobe Photoshop. So the next time you're on a photo shoot and you really want to get a blurry background, but you don't have the equipment with you, don't worry. You can always fake it in the edit. That's not a problem. If you enjoyed watching this video or if you feel like you learned something today, then please do consider subscribing. Check out the previous video. And of course, I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. See you there.